the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So we enter uh, the month of June, this very special month dedicated to the most sacred heart of Jesus. And on this Sunday in particular, we celebrate the fruits of the Sacred Heart with the Feast of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're offering our Mass today for all people of the parish. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thoughts. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Here we Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, 
have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our readings today come from the EFP, and remember we have the sequence before the Gospel. From the letter to the Hebrews. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than one made by men's hands because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, taking with him not the blood of goats and bull calves, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer are sprinkled on those 
who have incurred defilement, and they restore the holiness of their outward lives, how much more effectively the blood of Christ, who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner self from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so that the people who were called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. The word of the Lord. The sequence. Come then, good shepherd, bread divine, still show to us thy mercy sign. Oh, feed us still, still keep us thine, so may we see thy glorious shine in fields of immortality. O thou, the wisest, mightiest, best, our present food, our future rest, come make us each thy covert, thy chosen guest, co-heirs of thine and comrades blessed with saints whose dwelling is with thee.
whether you are new to the sacred liturgy, or perhaps you're a seasoned mass goer, our knowledge of the Eucharist can be quite limited. So Corpus Christi is a feast that allows us some time to do a deep dive into the Eucharist. Corpus Christi traditionally, of course, celebrated on a Thursday, linking us back to the day of its institution. But in Holy Week, we pondered the mystery of Christ's sacrificial death. This is my body, which is given up for you. Today, Christ's body and blood is shown to us so that we may know he walks with us on our pilgrimage. What Jesus gave the Twelve in the intimacy of the upper room, the Church shares with the world, meaning the Eucharist is not reserved for the few, but is given for the many. We cannot say for all, because not everyone accepts the reality of the Eucharist. Not everyone is able to proclaim the mystery of faith that necessarily follows. In John's Gospel in chapter 6, in the Bread of Life discourse, Christ explains the Eucharist is his body and blood. And that is such a scandal to some of his hearers that many disciples no longer followed him from that point. And this remains an integral point of separation between the Church Catholic and those Protestant denominations that diminish the Eucharist to a mere symbol of Christ's presence. The transformation of the earthly gifts of bread and wine into the body, blood, soul and divinity transform us, making our souls fit for the Kingdom when it will manifest itself in its fullness. The Eucharist itself, a very strange word, it means thanksgiving, and it expresses our gratitude that Jesus Christ has taken away the sins of the world and opened the gates of heaven for us and provides the nourishment necessary for eternal life. Do this in memory of me. It's not a suggestion. It is a command that we celebrate the Eucharist always as the memorial of his death and resurrection. We are, though, not repeating the sacrifice. His one sacrifice is effective for all time. No, we are renewing our memory of the sacrifice's efficacy as it is represented before our very eyes in this celebration of the Holy Mass. Here in this place, time has little meaning, so we should stop looking at our watches. It will take as long as it takes. The Mass transports us to Calvary and at the same time unites us to heaven. A pr profound consolation for us, especially when the Mass is offered for the holy souls our loved ones who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. The Eucharist, as the Second Vatican Council taught us, is our source and our summit. All things proceed from God, especially his love, and everything returns to him, our praise, our thanksgiving, and our service. Communion is more than the physical act of receiving his body and blood, itself a sublime mystery, but it is also an act of solidarity with those who form the body of Christ, the Church, those who profess the Catholic faith without reservation. The Church's doctrines and disciplines enable us to enter communion with the life of Christ, obligating us to attend in-person Mass each and every Sunday. There is, of course, no obligation to do the impossible, 
it being no sin to stay home when we are sick or housebound. But our obligation does include accepting inconvenience at times, travelling a little further to Mass, or attending at a time less favourable. We still need to be at Mass when we are on holiday, or when we go and visit our families, for our love for the Lord always takes precedence. On weekdays, of course there is no obligation, because often we have to be working, but we can, as part of our morning offering, still hand over our days, joys, hopes, sufferings and fears, and unite them to the sacrifice of the Mass being celebrated throughout the world. Doing this keeps alive our hunger for the Eucharist. In eating ordinary bread, we assimilate nutrients from it, giving us the strength for our daily chores. But in the Eucharist, we are assimilated into Christ's body. He becomes our viaticum, our food for the journey home to the Father's house. And when received in a state of grace, the Eucharist begins to make us more and more like Christ, meaning that when we die and we stand before the Father, what he sees is an image of his beloved Son, in whom he is well pleased. Receiving Holy Communion in mortal sin is pointless, utterly pointless, for there is nothing to assimilate if our soul is already dead. The situation is, of course, reversible through sacramental confession or a profound act of contrition if no priest is available for a long time. And by a long time, we mean months. Reflecting those areas in the world where there might be a priest shortage. But we must, of course, still go to confession when the opportunity prevents itself. Eucharistic grace opens us up to other people. The Mass, from the Latin missa, meaning mission, concludes as we are sent out, sent out to announce the Gospel of the Lord. Then we return to the altar the next Sunday, presenting the fruits of our labours. Let's hope we've got something to bring to the altar next week, that we haven't just thought, I've ticked the box, Mass is done for Sunday, and that's it for the rest of the week. No, what are we doing about our mission to announce the Gospel in word and in deed? We need to do this time and time again, week in, week out, until our pilgrimage ends, and God willing, there's a priest available to offer the Eucharist for us in our own Requiem Mass. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, mind from mind, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus as the mediator brings to his people a new and eternal covenant, so that we might receive that which he promises, eternal life. And so we pray. For the various communities that make up the Diocese of Aragon and Brighton. May the celebration of the Eucharist remain the core focus of the pastoral plan. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. For our country, preparing to vote for the forthcoming general election. May the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. For those who died on the Normandy beaches for the freedom of Europe. May the 80th anniversary of D-Day this week unite us more closely in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. For those preparing to make and receive their first Holy Communion. May the, sacrifice of the, may the sacrament of the Lord's body initiate them into the life of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For the sick, the housebound, the lonely, the bereaved, and all those in need. May the grace of the sacraments bring them nourishment and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For the faith of the party, especially those with anniversaries at this time. May they experience the fulfilment of covenant first promised to them in baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. May our Lady, who gave birth to Christ's body, pray with us as we say, Hail Mary, Lord of grace, Almighty Father, we raise the chalice of salvation, calling upon your name, and so we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord.
praying, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thee thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the Last Supper with his Apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you made them holy, so that the human race, founded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabaoth, Plenius Unceli at Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may attain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Mary Magdalene, St. Martha, St. Richard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For him and with him and with him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, though not in our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your day.
Let us pray. For God's holy Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of the precious body of blood who lives and reigns forever and ever. Uh, do please remember to always check the newsletter online for celebration of Masses, especially in this month of June, as uh, sacramental celebrations and family training affect when I'm available to celebrate Mass. Uh, particularly check on the 22nd of June, uh, because I'm at Arundel Cathedral in the afternoon, so the Vigil Mass will be at 7 here, not 6, on that particular Saturday. Our retiring collection today is for parish meetings. If you're using the card reader, please select the second collection. Mass on Monday in St Mary Magdalene will be at 11 a.m. It's the Requiem Mass for Una Gowan. Eternal rest from unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. 
May she rest in peace. Amen. Friday is the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and while it's not a holy day obligation, it is a day of great devotion for the faithful. As such, the Mass on Thursday evening at half past six will be a vigil Mass of the Sacred Heart to allow more people, especially if they're working during the day, an opportunity to celebrate this great feast. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Salve Regina, Mater.